to give you some ideas for meal planning like a pro because now um, we're getting pretty close to being the end of the four weeks and I really hope that eating this way has been easier for you. Um, that you've tried some new great meals and you've started thinking about you know just how much better you feel when you're organized. Um, it is always my aim for me to leave you knowing exactly how to do this. Yep, you know, I know that I've done my job when you've had some yummy meals and the kids are eating different things, that's all well and good. But I really want you to know how to do this on your own. So let me run you through, I guess, some of the principles that we've done and then also um, how you can continue to do those week after week. Feel free to, um, at any time, say hi. Um, and also to ask questions because the best thing in, that you can do is um, ask some questions and get the best out of me. I am sitting hidden away in my office. You can probably hear outside there's still two little kidly winks that are happy running around. Um, so cross your fingers, they don't come in and you know try and eat the phone. <laughs> it has happened. Um, I reckon to start with meal planning, it's really important to have a look at sort of the principles of um, creating ease for when you're building your meal plan together. So something that I did for you guys each week, and you may have noticed, is that you were having a lot more fish meals and you were also having a lot more vegetarian meals. That's a really good principle to work to. And the way that you can do that really easy is think of it like this one vegetarian meal a week, two fish meals a week, that brings you up to three nights of the week, and then the other four can be meat-based. That meat could well be chicken. It could be pork, it could be beef, whatever it is. But it's really important, I guess, when you're trying to get healthy, when you're trying to create variety, when you're um, trying to create ease in the kitchen by having a meal plan that you just know roughly what you're gonna have each week. Um, it's definitely a goal of mine, and yes, I'm already thinking about the next meal plan that's going to be mid-year, is kind of going, I want to be having a lot more vegetarian meals. Um, so I would say more than one a week, I want to have two. But that's a really good principle. If you just sort of lay out your sheet, um, and feel free to use the same template um, that I ha that I have used throughout, is sort of just go through and go Monday, Veggio. Tuesday, Wednesday, fish, and then the rest of the week can be meat, you know? Or when you're trying to up it, because you go, you identify and you go, okay, I want more veggie meals, then you do the same like that. That way it's easier to go in and fill in what you're going to have. Um, in terms of the days to dictate that, I would love for you guys to can always start, I mean, you, I know you have, but continually thinking, what do I have on during the week? So what nights can I put different meals on so that it becomes super duper easy to cook for those? Because um, I know that there was questions constantly about how can I cook a quick meal? How can I cook a quick meal? All of these principles that I've showed you show you that, you know, the Mexican feast in the slow cooker, um, using the pressure cooker, uh, cooking things in bulk so you can get home and turn your meatloaf into a pizza and into pasta. They're all quick meals and it becomes so much easier to pull off those quick meals when you've accounted for those days in your meal plan. So I know for me, Thursday and Friday is the two days that I mostly work. So tonight was like so quick. So last night, and you probably saw my little photo in there, we had shepherd's pie and it was twice the size of my head and it was absolutely delicious. So I made it that big because I knew that tonight um, I would be picking up my children at six o'clock at night and my husband, we would be coming home. So I literally wanted something that I could heat up. And that's what this meal plan helps you do, right? Because you're going, okay, I'm going to make sure that um, the nights that I have to I have something on, I can have red meat, which means then I can put something in the slow cooker the night before. Great. We'll have pork tacos again and we'll see you know how they go for two to three nights 
thinking that way cuts down on time in your meal planning as well. Because I really don't think that meal planning should take longer than five to 10 minutes. And having those ideas of going, what's on for the week? And then one fish, two veggies, four meats, then that helps get you there. There was a question about where do you kind of find all these recipe stays and how can you, um, you know, sort of find them all and keep a hold of them? There's a few ways. Pinterest is one, and I'll make sure I link below. When I save things to Pinterest, often I will have a folder that says dinner veggie meals, dinner fish meals, dinner meat meals. Again, you see what I'm doing here? So that when you pull up your meal plate for the week, you go, okay, go to the fish, go to the fish um, page and great. I can look at, um, you know, sorry, the fish board. I can look at the board and go, great, I want to cook that. Okay, veggies, I want to cook that. Meat, great, I want to cook those. Cuts down on time, right? You, of course, have to pin stuff to Pinterest for it to work. Um, I find it's really easy now. Like, they're definitely getting better with it. The way that I do it with ease on my phone is I'll copy the URL link and I'll go straight over to Pinterest app and I'll push the little pass button and it says... Um, insert from clipboard, which I don't even know what that really means, but somehow, <laughs> maybe you guys can tell me, the clipboard is one of your saved URL links. So it knows it straight away and I just put it in. I don't write anything fancy with it, you know, or anything like that. I, I literally just drag and drop it in. The other way that I get recipes and something I do a lot of is cookbooks. And I brought a few in with me. This is what a cookbook looks like in my house. I know it might look crazy, um, but it has a real lot of merit. Um, when I'm feeling incredibly uninspired and I'm going, oh, what am I gonna cook? I'm gonna do a meal plan. I wanna do a meal plan because I wanna get out of this rut. I wanna feel like a rock star, be organized for the week. I literally stand at my bookshelf, which they're all sitting on and I go, oh, there's a whole heap from there, brilliant open up what is it and so this one um what have we got is that i got any dinner ones oh yeah meatless meatballs great um you could go as far and i do have two health coaching clients that are so organized now after working with me one-on-one -on -one, that they actually have different stickers and they go through and they put all the veggie the pink ones for the veggie meals on their cookbooks and they put the yellow ones for another one. That all sounds really bonkers, but it's not actually that hard because you buy the little um, stickers like this from Officeworks and they've got different colors. And so now when they're sitting on the couch, you get off your phone um, and you grab a cookbook and you go through and do those. And that's something I guess I do a lot of and I really recommend you guys do too, is that finding your way to get inspired. It could well be using your phone. Um, and it could be with Facebook, like, and that's great. Save those recipes and save them off to Pinterest, like I said. Or it could be like me, it's cookbooks. Um, I regularly buy new cookbooks. I feel no qualms, no sadness, no, oh my gosh, I've got so many cookbooks. I use them. I sell the ones that I don't use. I'm actually just about to do another clean out of the ones. Beg your pardon, sorry, my children are real, <laughs> as you can hear. Um, I'm about to do a clean out of them. But this is one that I just got in the mail yesterday and already I'm absolutely in love with it. I follow my Darling Lemon Tongues blog. So I'm gonna go through this one with that same principles of just keeping little tags for each one so that when I go to do my meal plan, I can easily flick back and go, yep, great. When you're flicking back, it's really important when you start looking at these recipes, and I'll show you an exact example when we look at that meatless meatballs. So here, I can see that it makes 24 meatballs. Always look at what the serving sizes is, and I know it's tricky. There's no, um, you know, definite serving size because it's hard, right? Like some of us have young kids. I have a two and four year old. They eat differently to a 16 year old. So it's sort of tricky, but I tend to read that and I go, okay, great. Serves 24, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna double that recipe because then tomorrow night I can use it up, right? 
thinking of it that way, um, you the best, and maybe it's something that you want to do, is go through and pull up my meal plans again and look at it and just go, okay, so Stace made with leftovers rice pepper rolls. She made sang shui bao. She made it into pizzas. She made it into another, ro like into um, like a shepherd's pie. She made it into sushi. All of those things were amazing ways for you to learn how to stretch your meals out um, and to get more than one time out of a meal. So use those principles when you're meal planning. So for this meatless meatballs, I think that sounds absolutely brilliant. The first night, what's it got in it? Carrots, eggs, um, feta, onion, and what do they use to flavor it? There we go. Oregano, basil, thyme, and garlic. To me, that literally does sound like something that I could serve with pasta. <coughs> Excuse me. But that would also work really lovely on a pizza. So I'll make double and use it for a pizza the next night. So go ahead. One night you might want to just do it on the couch while you're watching telly. Is pull up my meal plans. Look at how I helped you stretch your meals and use that for your next ones. Um, <coughs> I find too that where to find ideas... Um, it really does help with that first principle that I spoke about is having, um, knowing what we're going to be cooking for the different like nights of the week. And you may end up getting to a point too where you actually have designated nights for some type of food. Um, Meat Free Monday is a big one. Um, I bought that cookbook actually. It's sitting by my bed. I can't wait to read it. Um, that's a great one for Monday nights. I know for me on a Friday night, we have hamburger night and I've only started it this year, but we haven't missed a Friday yet. Um, <coughs> excuse me, those kind of things just make it so much easier to meal plan because you go, well, Friday night's a hamburger, Monday night's a veg meal, so which one's which, you know, then there's not as many to do. Um, the other way is that you can cut down on time in the kitchen because that was one of the questions that I got is definitely being prepared with it, stretching out your meals. And also too, this could be a principle um, that could work for you. And I know I have been doing it recently as I've got a few girlfriends that have little babies um, and rather than giving them a jumpsuit, I'm giving them, you know, made meals, stuff, that, stuff that's going to really help them. I have gone through... And when I'm making a meal, I just make double and it goes straight into the freezer. Could you do that while you have your mojo and you're feeling so motivated from this meal plan? Be like, great, for the next two weeks, I'm cooking double of everything for dinner. Sure, it might look like my budget's going crazy and we'll fill the freezer or whatever. But think of that time that that saves you. It's kind of that idea that, and I know when I start chatting with my one-on-one -on -one clients, so many of them say like, Stace, I literally spent two weeks in the kitchen for an hour every night. But then it eases off because once you get to, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just going to grab my water. Um, keeping it real. <laughs> once you get to having enough in, um, in the freezer, you can then start topping it up. And that's what I do um, definitely with my lunch boxes. Is that you've probably seen those and you're like, oh my gosh, how is she cooking this? Well, the reality is like yesterday I made kale chips and amazingly my kids really like them. But I've made five jars in one go. That's going to last me a month of um, lunch boxes. I make a huge slice and I times it by two. Use that same kind of principles with your dinner as well. And you might want to at that time, rather than just making like a huge meatloaf like we did this week, is you might want to save half of the mince and not even cook it or cook it onto a pizza. You know, you buy pizzas frozen, why not? You know, like make it up and put it on there. These things help you too. And if um, you're anything like me, I live in the inner west of Sydney and we have so many great places to eat, but they're expensive. For my kids to go out for sushi, it's 60 bucks. I know that sounds bonkers, but they eat like four plates of sashimi, right? Like it is expensive. So when I have stuff in the freezer that looks awesome, I wanna eat, it's not only saving me time, it's saving me money. So it's worth it, right? Um, 
I did have a, a different question um, about substitutes and, and sort of how do you cater for that with meal plans? Um, <coughs> you probably noticed from my recipes is that I was always saying, oh, or you could use this, or you could use this. Like when we did the chicken and we did the fish crumbed, I said you could use uh, breadcrumbs, you could use quinoa flakes, you could use almond meal. I am huge on substitutes and I think that that is something that will give you ease when you're meal planning. So start playing around with that and use me. Just because we've finished up this meal plan doesn't mean I'm not going to be in the group. You know, ask those questions and be like, oh, I saw this dish, could I try that? But as a general rule of thumb, I find that most legumes and most grains can be interchanged. So if I see a recipe with rice, I can easily switch it out for quinoa or millet. They cook quicker, so I often do that. Um, if I see legumes, so say something needs chickpeas or red kidney beans, if I'm not using a tin, I know that that's going to take so long to cook, so I'll use lentils. Um, you can sort of switch those ones in and out, and I recommend playing around with those because you probably found too that from the meal plan, there might have been food one night that the kids didn't want to eat. So say that was... Um, <coughs> The satay. Remember back in week two, we made the satay, the um, peanut satay, and we did it. What did we do it with? With cauliflower, um, rice. But then the next night, we made it into a really yummy, crispy pizza. Kids might have loved it as pizza. This kind of stuff gives you options that when you're looking at tweaking recipes, you go, okay, well, look, I know they're not going to eat it that way, but they'll eat it like this. So I'm going to eat it the other way you know, and get around it, or you might just be able to simply change out one of the substitutes and, and change it over. Um, so that's how you do it with lentils and also oh, with legumes and grains. The other thing that you can often tweak out is flour. And this is a whole new board game, uh, ball game, not board game, ball game, um, that I am um, navigating at the moment as well. Um, it can be quite tricky when you're trying to tweak out um, a, a flour that has gluten in it for a non-gluten flour. There's a lot that you have to play with. And the biggest one, and um, I do see it a lot when I'll get messages saying, oh, Stace, I tried cooking this and I just used coconut flour. It's never going to work. Coconut flour is basically dehydrated coconut that is full of water, right? <laughs> it's not fibrous like a um, grain of wheat is. So it just soaks up anything and dries everything out. So never substitute straight for that. If I see a recipe with spelt flour, I pretty much substitute out my gluten-free flour for it. Um, I use Bob's Red Mill flour because it doesn't have corn in it. It rises beautifully, it's light, it's delicious. I keep on hand to brown rice flour and buckwheat flour. Sometimes I keep quinoa flour and chickpea flour. Both just both are super strong. And I just haven't got there with my diet yet that um, I kind of do that. Uh, I need ease with my night. So I tend to use those more conventional ones to sort of switch out. Um, when you're looking at meats, you can definitely be tweaking those up. Um, I had a few people that um, messaged me and said, Oh, Stace, I made the um, chicken meatloaf with pork. It was delicious, you know, or I made it with beef. A lot of those um, meats you can actually switch out. And I recommend giving them a go, you know, like in vogue it was a little while ago for us to eat kangaroo meat. Do you remember that? And so a lot of people were sort of tweaking them out for bolognese and stuff. Do it. Try it. It could be a different flavour and you might be surprised that your kids actually really like it. Veggies as well. Um, my kids will eat veggies some ways and not the others. So definitely look at substituting those out. Um, I just find that you've just got to pay attention to the cooking time. So um, say we were making wedges and you wanted to tweak it for zucchini because your kids love zucchini. Just think it through and go, okay, zucchinis are probably going to cook a lot quicker than potatoes. I should probably just go back and check it. And that's what I tend to do a lot with my substitute stuff. So if I'm not going off a, a recipe, 
um, I will often check it and just make sure, you know, like go back after 20 minutes and just see what's happening. Definitely important to do that if you're tweaking quinoa into a recipe that say risotto rice was meant to be in that takes, you know, a long time to cook, it's going to cook so much quicker. So you just want to just keep an eye on it. They're my ideas for meal planning. I'm going to flick this on through email tomorrow as well, as well as a winner from last week that we had um, for the, the most number of posts. But as always, I am here. Use me for these questions. Um, and I really hope that meal planning starts becoming so incredibly quick for you. Use all those principles that I chatted through and as always, I'm here. So you ask any questions and I am only too happy to help. Happy, happy uh, Thursday. Bye guys.